Hey guys, welcome back. If you did watch the first episode um, to following me along my journey to get my commercial pilot license, I'm going to try and um, be a little bit more real this week because I watched my episode that I did for the first couple of weeks and I seemed like a bit of a twat or maybe just the video wasn't put together that well. Either way, trying to give it to you as real as possible. Um, so yeah, here we are. This morning, I finally got a chance to go and do my uh, CASA exam for performance and planning. Uh, in the last episode, I told you how uh, I was studying from home. Um, we were doing our Zoom classes with the school, learning all the different formulas and ins and outs of what's involved in performance and planning. Um, and yeah, finally today, got a chance to sit down and do the exam, which went for two and a half hours. Um, I'll give you the result a little bit later on in this uh, episode. But first I want to tell you about what worked and what didn't work so far as um, preparing for the exam and what I would recommend in hindsight now having just sat it. So first of all, the resources that I used to prepare for it. Um, obviously, we I'm at the at a school down at Bankstown, so we did our classes which were really good. I mean, that set us up for pretty much the rest of preparing for it. Um, gathering all the key equations that we needed to learn and apply to the different questions. Um, so that was a big chunk of it, and I did tell you about that last one, so I won't go over it again. Following that, what I did was went online and bought the Bob Tate practice exams. There's four exams you get. Three of them are untimed, and one of them's timed. Um, the last two in the untimed ones, I put a timer on to try and compress how quick I can do those questions. Um, and they were all fairly similar to what was in the exam. The only two things that were, I would say, out of date with the Bob Tate stuff was the fuel cap. Um, sometimes in his questions, they were using um, not the current 2018 fuel cap which is a 45 minute reserve, um, and then the 10% variable. So just keep an eye on that and make note of that if you do go down the path of using the Bob Tate stuff. Uh, the other one that I did, which was a little bit off my back, was I just went through and read um, all the texts that we've been using from the school, uh, the Bob Tate books and the fuel cap and the ALA cap. Um, if you don't know what a CAP is, it's a advisory publication from CASA. Um, there's a fuel one and a um, ALA one, or um, aircraft landing area advisory publication. So that's what I'm talking about. Use them, and I actually made myself some flip cards. So I had a question on one side, and then on the back side of it was the answer. Um, just focusing on all those one mark questions that were going to be in the exam. And surprisingly, they were actually pretty effective. There was two or three questions in the exam which I had written, written down on my flip cards. So when I get a chance, I'll try and tidy them up and actually share them uh, in the show notes of this episode. So if you're going to go do that one, then you can use my flip cards. Maybe it's going to be some help for you, maybe not. Either way, check them out. Um, so yeah, finally, um, all, all, all things told, I think I was studying for four weeks for it. Um, and then, um, yeah, went in there this morning, 8.30, uh, put on the uniform, uh, went down to Bankstown, and it was a full house in the exam room, other people doing different exams, and a couple of us from the same class that did the performance exam this morning. I was a bit nervous, I must say, because in the past I hadn't gone too well in the PPL, uh, PPL, PPLA theory exam. Um, so I was pretty nervous to make sure that I passed this one first go. And uh, not only did I pass first go, <clears throat> I got 86%. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's pretty good. Given the amount of practice that I did, I thought that I would get somewhere in the 90s, but 
I'm not too unhappy with the 86. Um, and I think if I can keep that mark up around 86 or higher, or 85, 90, for the other six exams that we do in the CPL course, I'll be pretty happy. So, yeah, that's pretty much a wrap up from the theory side of things for getting ready for what was a month of performance and planning. Um, hopefully, there's a few things in there that you've been able to take away and you can use for your training. Um, I will, before I end the episode, is actually just go through um, my KDRs. Um, KDRs is a term that you'll get when you start doing your CASA exams. It's just uh, knowledge deficiency reports. So what were the things that you got wrong in the exam? Uh, mine were mine was <clears throat> turbulence penetration speed. Um, I think that's referring to. There's a few different questions. You'll find them in the Bob Tate as well. But this one got me because it was worded a little bit tricky. Um, essentially, I think what they're getting at. I'm not, I'm not sure what they're trying to get at, but essentially what I did, I just didn't read the question properly. So one thing to note, read the bloody question. Um, I'm dyslexic, so I've got to read the things 10 times just to um, get to an answer in the first place. I think this one must have just slipped me by, but anyway, read the question. The other one was determine a mac maximum landing weight. Um, I think I just stuffed up one of the calculations. Uh, in one of the questions. Another determine uh, landing distance required. There are some questions that require you to use a very sharp pencil. And it looks like my pencil was not sharp enough or I got something else wrong. And then uh, determine minimum, minimum fuel required for flight. I can't pinpoint exactly what that question was, but um, yeah, keep an eye on those calculations for flights. I think sometimes you convert kilograms to liters or liters to kilograms or gallons to liters or gallons to kilograms, and that can trip you up. So yeah, again, I think like our classroom instructor said, just read the fucking question and you should be pretty good. Um, something definitely to take away. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much a wrap from the first month. Um, of my uh, commercial pilot license training. Now we get to start the fun stuff. So for the next 30 days, we get to take an airplane and fly around the country. Um, given we're still in restriction mode with crossing borders, we can't fly into the outback too far, but we are able to fly all the way around New South Wales uh, Victoria, ACT, not that there's too much there to see, um, and uh, yeah, check out some of the smaller uh, ALAs and places to land. So if these first two videos bored you to shit, then hopefully the, the next couple will be a bit more exciting with a lot more flying being done, and um, hopefully some yeah, some other things, more practical things that I can share with you that I've learned along the way and might be uh, a good remedy for this isolation that we've been going through for the last little while. So thanks for tuning in. Um, please give me any feedback that you have on the videos or if you want to know anything that I've learned along the way, I would love to share it because like I said at the start of this series, Reason I'm doing it is because when I was searching around trying to find information about the best way to get your commercial pilot license and what it's actually like, I couldn't find too much so far as people that were doing it in Australia. Um, and that is my goal with this, is to share it with you and also to have a bit of fun with it. So thanks for tuning in. Looking forward to sharing some stories and lessons learnt and some wingtip footage from our flyaways over the next couple of weeks. So appreciate it. Happy flying and uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers.